want to do before we go into a time of worship. I want to pray for our nation collectively as a church. We're going to pause as the church as believers, and we're going to pray that song we sung that says, the battle belongs to you. You know, that came from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. When the, uh, when the Moabites and the Ammonites, and I'm going to speak about Moab here in a, in a little bit. The Moabites, the Ammonites, and all the ites <laughs> come against Israel. And the king was perplexed because he was outnumbered. He had no clue what to do. But the man of God, the prophet of God, spoke up and said, You won't need to fight this battle because the battle belongs to the Lord. And so Jehoshaphat, the king, he comes before God. He says, God, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. My eyes are on you. And the day of the battle came, and Jehoshaphat sends out the worship team. And they go out worshiping and praising, and the enemy was all befuddled, and it freaked them out, and they started to slaughter themselves. And all, the, all, the, all Judah did was just worship, worship, and the enemy defeated itself. And we're, we're going to hold to that, and we're going to practice that right now. You know, as, as a pastor, of course, you know I, I'm pretty bold at, to say what I think biblically. But as a pastor, I want you to hear this. I recognize in this church, we're community church. There's people watching that are Republicans. There's people in here that are Republicans. There's people in here that are Democrats. There's people that are in here that are happy about what's going on, would be celebrating a Biden victory. There's others that are sad about what's going on. And that's the reality. Here's, here's what I want to say. Don't let, this, don't let the election destroy your friendships. Don't let it destroy your family, your family. I've got, I've got people, friends that voted on both sides of the aisle. Now, I will say this, though. I will say this. I'm a conservative Christian. I preach conservative values because I'm a student of God's word. My political view does not shape my biblical worldview. My biblical worldview shapes my political view. Amen. You see that? So, I'm, and I know I say things that offend people. That's okay. I've got to give an account to God, you know. I'm pro-life. I'm pro-Israel. I did not like, I did not like the Obama administration trying to divide the land of Israel. I did not like that. I did not like that because that's, that's, we're pro-Israel. I'm pro-Second Amendment. I'm pro-First Amendment. Do y'all know I get paid to run my mouth? <laughs> and as you can probably figure out, I'm not a little seeker-sensitive, fluffy teacher just trying to pep you up. I preach the whole counsel of the Word of God. And they're going to have to throw me in jail before I stop preaching Jesus and the blood. I, I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach it. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 4. I, I put this out last night on, on Facebook. Acts chapter 4. Peter and John stood before the, the cancel culture. <laughs> they stood before the, the, the censors and the fact checkers. How many of y'all been fact checked on Facebook? You know what that means? It means you're speaking truth. That's what that means. But they stood before the council. And the council says in, in verse 18, they say, do not speak Jesus anymore. And see, much of Christianity at that point, which is, which is the reason why we're in the mess we are, is because much of Christianity just tucked their tail and just, okay, okay. <laughs> That's why we've got the LBGT agenda being forced down our throats. That's why we've got a godless agenda because the church just... But you know what, you know what Peter and John did? It's verse 19. It said, it, they got louder. They got louder. And they started to preach Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh. oh. There you go. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, Peggy got her a birthday gift. 
blow you the trumpets. Blow you the trumpets of Zion. That's all right. That's all right. Blow them. Blow them. Because it's time for the church to blow their trumpets, isn't it? It's time for the church to. But, but here's, here's the point with all of that. Everything we do, we do in love. We do with compassion. We do with empathy. I don't like, I don't like the... I don't like the arrogancy of, of, of some of the people. I don't like that. You know? We can, we can be bold for our faith, and we need to be bold. We need to be bold. We need to take a stand. If, if, if Biden is elected president, we're going to pray for our president and the things that, that he does right, just like Obama and, and Bush and Trump. We're going to, that's good. But if you put forth legislation and try to put something through that's not biblical, we're going to stand against it. And it's okay. When they call for unity, when they call, the easy thing is to call for unity. Oh, let's all come together. Now, look, I'm going to come together. I'm not going to be hateful. But I'm not going to unify with a godless agenda. I can't unify with that. But we do it in love because we've got to reach people for Jesus. People need truth. Jesus is coming back. I believe we're living in the last days. We're in a study of revelation. And oh, we need, oh, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. God, our eyes are upon you. God, we know that, that in our nation, there is rejoicing and there's sorrow. We know that in our nation, some are happy, many are sad. We're divided. We are, we are literally divided. We're at a tipping point. Father, I don't know what to do but to pray. God, you've, you've, seen, you've seen the prayers of your people over this past year. The March on Washington praying. You've seen the return where hundreds of thousands of people came and repented for their sins. God, you see how churches and, and evangelicals have prayed like never before. You've seen it. So, God, we have to know that you're working. We have to know that you're working. We have to know that, that even when we can't see what you're doing, we know that you're working, God. And at some point, God, we have to trust you. We have to trust you. We have to trust you. God, teach us to measure our words to measure our actions. Give us wisdom in Jesus' name. God, we know that your will will be done. Your will will be done. We know that there is going... We know that the end is coming and at some point there is going to be a Babylonian system. There is going to be a socialistic agenda that the Antichrist will usher in. We know that because we know we know at some point, God, you're going to be kicked out. We understand it. it's part of your plan. But God, I pray that it doesn't happen now. Please, God. Please, God. I still got people that need to be saved. God, I still got family that needs you, God. God, I, I'm torn because I, I pray even so come quickly. But at the same time, I'm saying, please hold off just a bit so, so I can get my family into the kingdom. I don't know how to pray, God, except I trust you. I trust you, God. We, as a church, we want to be faithful. We don't want to compromise. We don't want to compromise, Father. Honor our faithfulness, Father. And yes, God, God, I know people don't want, might not want to hear this, but that's okay. I thank you, Father, for the previous administration that defended my freedom to preach. And I thank you, God, for the pro-Israel administration that it was. And regardless of what happens, God, the most pro-life president in history, God, I know that you're going to remember the good. Like Nehemiah prayed, he said, God, remember what I've done. You're going to remember the good. You're going to remember the good. We lay it all at your feet, Father, in Jesus' name, and we just trust that you're going to work it all out in the name of Jesus because we've read the back of the book. Chapter 22, chapter 22 of Revelation. And in the end, we win. 
we win. Presidents come. Presidents go. Kings come. Kings go. But the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings, shall reign forever more and of his kingdom there shall be no end that's my king 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 King. bless the lord bless the lord come on stand to your feet stand to your feet hallelujah hallelujah thank you god we're citizens of the kingdom of heaven There's no Republicans, there's no Democrats in the kingdom of heaven. It's citizens of the Lamb. It's citizens of the Lion. God, I pray that you would unite us as a church, Father. Unite us as a church. The enemy's not our brothers. The enemy's not the Republicans. The enemy's not the Democrats. We identify the enemy to be old sleuth with the devil. We're not at war with each other. We're at war with the principalities of darkness. The deceiver, the lion, the the liar. No wonder he's trying to cause confusion. But we thank you, God, for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue worshiping. Amen.